we are ready to start learning how to name molecules. The first type of molecule that we're going to learn how to name is the alkane. And since this is the first time that we're learning how to name molecules, I'm gonna spread this instruction out over quite a few videos so that it's not a whole lot of information jammed into one video. And what I'm going to do is start with some definitions and then we're going to do some examples and then we're going to do some more definitions and some more examples so we're just going to kind of be going back and forth with this information we're not going to fill all of this information out on this one video but over the series it'll all get filled out and so we are going to start first of all by defining alkane just in case you forgot what an alkane is the alkane is a saturated hydrocarbon. I don't think I've used the word saturated before. Hydrocarbon we've defined before. That means that it's a molecule that contains only carbon and hydrogen atoms. But the saturated part I think is new. So that just means that it only contains single bonds no double bonds, no triple bonds. Uh, okay, so alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons having only single bonds. And as we're going through and learning how to name alkanes and when we continue naming other molecules like alkenes and alkynes, we're gonna study two different methods of naming or nomenclature, which is the fancy way of saying naming. The two different methods are called IUPAC, which is clearly it's an abbreviation, but we pronounce it like a word, IUPAC. And then the other method is called common nomenclature or common naming. The IUPAC method, IUPAC first of all stands for the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. And one of the, the jobs of the IUPAC organization is coming up with a system or a method for naming molecules. So the IUPAC method of naming is a systematic or methodical process. A systematic name, meaning that we have a method or a pattern or a way that we build the name of a molecule. And we all understand this systematic method. And so the IUPAC system, once you understand how it works, it, it, it's very easy to use. The other type of naming that we will use occasionally is called common naming. In common naming, the um the names don't have any sort of logic to them they're not methodical in the way that they're built so a common name is one that has some sort of historical significance it's non-systematic and in a nutshell, what this means is that basically you have to memorize it because the name, because it's non-systematic, the name just kind of doesn't make sense. Um, fortunately, we don't do a lot of common naming. We only use common names for molecules when it is the most prevalent form of the name uh, of the molecule. So those are the two different methods of naming that we're gonna study. And let's get into it. We're, we're really gonna focus on learning the IUPAC method. We won't come across common nomenclature for a while. We're gonna start with the IUPAC method. And when we are naming a molecule according to IUPAC, whether or even if it's not an alkane, the very first thing that we always need to do is identify the parent chain for the molecule. And the parent chain is the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms. So we call this the parent chain and this longest continuous chain of carbon atoms is what dictates the molecule's base name. So let's go take a look at, at that, the parent chain and the base names. So right now we're gonna focus on, on this um, slide. We're just gonna focus on this right here. 
Um, and this is going to be, we're gonna to put together a table based on the number of carbon atoms that might be in a parent chain and the base name that we would give to that particular type of molecule. So we'll, I'll edit this a little bit. In this column, we're going to come up with the alkane name or the base name or the name of the parent chain. This is something that you have to memorize, but fortunately you'll use it so much that it's gonna be very easy for you to remember. If we have one carbon in the chain, the alkane's name or the base name or the parent name is methane, two is ethane, three is propane, four is butane, and fortunately the rest of them do make sense. Five is pentane, the five penta prefix that makes sense. Six is hexane. Seven is heptane. Are you noticing that all of these have the same ending? They all end in ane. Fortunately, that continues. That's intentional. Octane, there will never be an exception there. Nine is nonane and ten is decane. So for all of these names, because they all end, they all have the same ending, you might start to wonder, does that mean something? Is there significance to that? There absolutely is. The ending ane is a suffix that we use to indicate that the molecule is an alkane. And the initial part we call the prefix, that is used to indicate how many carbon atoms are in that particular alkane. So it's very handy. Let's practice this. We're gonna focus on just this molecule to start with. If we wanted to name this molecule, our job is to find the parent chain. And I've chosen this one to start with because it's pretty easy. The parent chain, the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms is just this molecule right here. To come up with this molecule's name, we just need to figure out how many carbon atoms are in this particular continuous chain. I have found five carbon atoms in this molecule. Let's go see how we would name that. Five carbon atoms in a molecule with nothing else going on is named pentane. And let's digest or break down what this name means. So we know we've talked about the ane suffix. This means that we have, it's an alkane. So that means that we only have carbon-carbon single bonds, no carbon-carbon double bonds, no carbon-carbon triple bonds. And the initial part, pent, that tells us that we have five carbon atoms in the longest chain. That is IUPAC, the systematic methodical process for naming a simple alkane.